Hi, my name is Katie Berman. I am the founder of Catalina Horse Rescue. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization created in September of 2018, dedicated towards saving slaughter-bound horses. We vow to help any horse in need, but we focus specifically on freedom from feedlots and auction yards, pulling horses from the slaughter pipeline before they ship to Mexico and Canada for meat consumption purposes. When I started learning about this whole auction industry and feedlots and the slaughter pipeline and that this is actually a thing, that horses still today ship to these slaughterhouses was mind blowing to me. And, you know, the fact that it's it's so quiet and nobody really talks about it, you know, I knew that there was, this needed to change, like something needed to, to happen and somebody needed to start speaking up for these horses. One of the most common questions I get asked about Cataluna is our name. Like, how did you come up with the name? Where did it come from? And it's actually a combination of my name and my mare, Luna, who is basically the founder of Cataluna and why we're all here today. You know, she is the matriarch of this program and she is the inspiration behind all of the horses that you see here every single day. When she first came in, she was so shut down. She wanted nothing to do with people. Knowing what she came from and what she became and the relationship and the connection that we had which was so powerful that it created all of this that's what i strive to bring to each and every horse who comes in our doors today we bring horses in with the goal of rescuing rehabilitating and then rehoming eventually to find forever loving homes for seeing them come out of their shelves you know seeing the horses become happy again you know and see the light come back in their eyes <laughs> that's that's what gets me um i i look every day for a posting from her about the updates on the horses because you can't get over their stories and their recovery i think you know it's it's everybody's safe place and you come here and you walk through the gate and it just feels like the weight of the world gets taken off your shoulders this is truly a sanctuary for horses and humans it's just has such a calming effect you know we all are so busy we work in our jobs we have our families we're taking care of and then you come here and everything just sort of disappears and you're just focused on the horses and it's just a huge break from daily life one story i really want to share with you is the story of ernie and bugsy um, ernie is one of our farm favorites everybody adores him old man ernie he just loves all the attention but when we first met him, he was the total opposite. You know, he was a skeleton horse. He was absolutely skin and bones. I've never seen a horse that was so emaciated and really we didn't know if they would make it. We went with the intention of bringing home three horses. That's what we had room for. I had a three horse trailer, so that's what we were gonna fill. And there was every type of horse that you could think of and every kind of condition. But there was this one little horse in particular. Her name is Bugsy. She was a senior, um, skeleton this horse was so emaciated but you could see the spirit she still had in her eyes and the second we entered that pen she linked right on to us and followed us around like a shadow you know she didn't leave our side once but you know our hearts ached for her because she served a whole life with someone and this is how they treated her and this is how they dumped her when she needed it most once the auction started going you know our trailer really quickly filled up we only had a three horse set that time and we had three horses that really needed us. You know, of course, Bugsy was on our list. Um, horses come through the ring one by one, and there's so many that come through, we could only take three horses out of over a hundred. You know, how do you how do you pick? Did we make the right call? Like that's always really hard and like that. I know weighs so heavy on Katie having to make that choice. I had to focus on the ones that we did take home that day. I got unloaded in the trailer. We started coming home and I just I couldn't stop thinking about her. I couldn't stop thinking about her. We're on our way home. You know, Katie's driving and she's just like, I just like, I don't think we can leave them behind. Like, like, what are they going to do with them? So I called the auction yard and I said, hey, I really want to come back for this horse. I know she was a no sale. I'll come back tomorrow. I'll make the trip tomorrow. The next day I made the trip and as we pull in, I see Bugsy in a pen and I see her with this other horse who looks just like her, all red, but he's a bit taller, still super skinny. And I thought that's weird. I wonder if somebody else is coming to pick him up. So we go in and, and the person who owns the facility comes out and first thing he says to me, looks at me and I said, so how do you feel about two horses? And I was like, oh, well, I wasn't planning on two, but you know, what's what's going on? He said, well, he's the other no sale, you know, with no sales, especially ones who are as old as he is and as skinny as he is, we there's nothing that we can do with him here. So 
you know, if you don't want him, no problem, but we're just going to take him out back and shoot him if you don't take him. So, of course, I'm not going to leave him there. And I loaded him up and, and I got him on the trailer and they both came home with me that day. And they were so grateful, like they knew. When a horse is in that condition, it's really hard for them to come back from that. Like, honestly, we didn't know if either of them were going to pull through. They're both older, probably in their 30s at least. And unfortunately, you know, with Bugsy being as old as she was, it just, we started noticing some signs that she was decreasing in her health after about two weeks of being here. And one morning I went out and, you know, I knew that it wasn't good. And we had our vet come out and we confirmed that her organs were shutting down and, you know, there was nothing that we could do. So our team was there and we just gave her every last bit of love that she deserved and she should have gotten. And, you know, we laid her to rest and she had a beautiful passing and Ernie was right there with her. But I also feel like she knew that she was doing this for Ernie too, because Ernie is here today and he's doing amazing and he's thriving because of Bugsy. Ernie would not be here if it wasn't because of Bugsy. But he came here, skin and bones, completely cast aside. And he's flourishing, you know, and I just, it was a lot, but it was really beautiful. And I think getting to now see Ernie, he comes out here and he bosses everybody around and he runs and he's so full of life. Um, he's happy and he loves his scratches and everybody loves him. And he's, it, you know, added to all of our lives, just his presence. It just makes me feel really, really proud of Katie and like what she's created for these animals. It's the stories like that that just you know, it, it shows how much power goes into what this place is and, you know, paying attention to the horses who need it and, you know, just showing up for them how they should have been shown up for in their whole life. There's an old Western saying in horse culture, horse history, that thunderstorms are horses hoofbeats in heaven. And the day that Bugsy passed, you know, Ernie was so shut down. I think they had really bonded in their time of being together. And, you know, we hadn't had a thunderstorm on our farm for a long time, but about two hours after, you know, she crossed over, we had one of the most deep, rolling, powerful thunderstorms that I think we've ever had out on this farm. And it was just, it was something that was so touching because I feel like that was Bugsy's way of saying like, I'm good up here and just please take care of him down there because that's just, that's what they do. They watch out for each other, they watch out for us and it's our job to watch out for them. Since starting Cataluna back in 2019, we've successfully rescued and rehomed over 120 equines, whether that's um, horses, minis, you know, big giant draft horses, donkeys, all of the above. When I see Katie, I can't, even imagine the strength in that young lady. I mean, she's she's younger than my youngest daughter and the things she's accomplished in these years is just crazy. It's really special and beautiful and I feel so proud to be here and like see everything Katie's created for these horses and for the people here too. Like I think like this is a people rescue too. <laughs> There's no single word that describes this place other than, you know, amazing, wonderful, it's, I don't know. I think because of my love for horses and I've seen what, what's happened and the horses that are cast aside so easily and she comes along and gives them a new life, you know, and a new purpose. It just means a lot to me what she does. A lot. You know, I feel like this is, this is why I'm here. Like, I, you know, everybody's got a reason of why they feel like they're, they're meant to be on this earth and I feel like mine is too connect with these horses and be a voice for these, you know, these animals who are ultimately voiceless. In running a program like this, it takes a village. It takes a community. This is not an easy thing to do. The funding and the time and the effort and the energy and the successes and the sadness of the ones you have to let go, you know, it's, it's a lot. And if we're wanting to support the mission and help with you know, the care that goes into taking care of these animals every single day, there's an abundance of ways that you can get involved, whether it's donating, which is huge. You know, we're a 501c3, so everything is donation-based, whether it's 
grain or feed or farrier care, vet bills, you know, all of the above that goes into providing the best possible care that we can for these animals or helping with volunteering. You know, if you've got time and you want to come out, even just sitting with the horses is huge for these guys. Come join the family. You know, we love everybody and we want to make sure that this is a, an open, welcoming environment to animals and people everywhere.